On Tuesday, February 14th, 2023, the European Parliament voted to approve a new law. What it achieved was a ban on the new sales of fossil fuel powered vehicles from 2035, and by and large, it was considered a huge victory in the drive to electrify the automotive industry. But then, at the last minute, Germany changed their minds. It wasn't that they wanted to sabotage the EU's net zero targets, though, rather, they demanded a small exemption to the ban. E fuels or sustainable fuels are synthetic fuels produced using renewable energy and carbon dioxide captured from the atmosphere, and so they produce no net carbon dioxide emissions when they are burned. The argument then was that internal combustion engine vehicles could be excluded from the ban so long as they ran on these fuels. Germany's protest was one that naturally landed well within its automotive industry but it would land particularly well for perhaps the most established, most recognised of its many household names. In recent years, Porsche have invested more than $100 million into the very technology Germany was seeking to exempt. This is the Patagonian Desert in southern Chile, and it is here, not Germany, that most of Porsche's investment has ended up, a mere 14,000 kilometres from the company's headquarters. In collaboration with HAF Global, Siemens Energy, ExxonMobil and other international partners, Porsche opened the Haruoni e-fuel pilot plant in December of last year, situated north of the city of Punta Arenas. In renewable energy terms, the region is a goldmine. It's home to a wind so strong and consistent that it shapes the local flora that grows in its path. A wind turbine here will operate at full load for an average of 270 days a year, producing three to four times as much electricity as the same machinery would in Germany. But how does an attractive wind energy resource justify producing a fuel halfway around the world? In order to answer this question, we have to understand the process of e-fuel production. The first step involves reacting hydrogen with carbon dioxide to produce methanol. In order for this to be a truly green process, it cannot emit any carbon dioxide. Hydrogen rarely exists naturally, so to be used in sustainable fuels, it must be produced by electrolysis, and crucially using a renewable source of energy, which in the case of HIF's plant, is wind. Electrolysis involves splitting water into oxygen and hydrogen gas through supplying an electric current. In the electrolyzer used in the Haruoni plant, water reacts at the anode, the positive electrode, to produce oxygen, hydrogen ions and electrons. At the negative electrode, or the cathode, hydrogen ions recombine with electrons to produce hydrogen gas. The problem is that this is not an efficient process. Even though the Siemens electrolyzer used in the plant sits in the upper range of electrolyzer efficiencies at over 75%, it still means a loss of energy that could otherwise be directly implemented into the power grid. This hydrogen produced is then passed through a copper zinc catalyst along with the carbon dioxide, where it undergoes a hydrogenation reaction to form methanol. Again, in making a sustainable fuel, it's important that the carbon dioxide used has been taken out of the air, so that when it is released during combustion, the net emission is zero. In the carbon capture system used in the plant, air is passed through what is effectively a massive filter, enabling the carbon dioxide to be trapped, released, and then concentrated for collection. As one can imagine, it's not a process that happens for free, and so yet more renewable electricity is required. Finally, the methanol needs to be converted into something modern cars can actually run on, in a methanol to gasoline conversion process. Without going too deep into how this works, the raw methanol is vaporised and superheated before proceeding into a reactor where it undergoes several reaction pathways to form the mixture of hydrocarbons making up gasoline. E-fuel production is expensive, expensive in cost, and even more so in resource use. It's clear then that, should this technology become close to feasible, a cheap and reliable source of renewable energy is vital. But this does raise moral concerns as to whether such a valuable energy resource should be wasted on such an inefficient production process. The main source of the debate around e-fuels stems from their comparison against other green vehicle technologies, namely battery electric and fuel cell electric vehicles. 
In terms of energy efficiency, the story is pretty black and white. Consider we produce one unit of electricity from a renewable source. Of this one unit, 70% can be directly transferred into torque at the axle by a battery electric vehicle. Yet, for a vehicle running on hydrogen, this conversion drops to 20%, and for an internal combustion engine vehicle running on e-fuels, it can be as low as 10%. E-fuels, from a resource use standpoint, are hopelessly inefficient. And whilst their cost effectiveness and efficiency may improve with scaling, the combination of a complex production process and use in an inefficient combustion engine mean they are unlikely to get anywhere close to the performance of a battery electric vehicle. So why then is Porsche even bothering exploring this route? E-fuels offer one key advantage over both battery electric and fuel cell vehicles, namely that they can be used by current vehicles without any additional modification. And considering there are over 1.3 billion internal combustion engine vehicles on the road currently, with many more years left in their lifespan, it would be unsustainable not to try and keep them in use. In circular thinking, it's favourable to prolong the use of existing products rather than consuming resources in producing new ones. As the automotive industry inevitably undergoes electrification, sustainable fuels could help smoothen the transition in a resource-conscious manner up to the point that existing combustion engine vehicles reach the end of their lives. Battery electric vehicles, after all, are not without their own environmental sacrifices, and the extensive use of many precious resources like lithium and cobalt should be approached with caution until better alternatives are developed. The other advantage to the drop-in property of e-fuels is that they are also easy to transport due to the existing petrol and diesel network. For hydrogen fuel used in fuel cell electric vehicles, transportation and storage is currently one of the greatest challenges holding the technology back. In the case of Porsche, there is, speculatively, also a personal interest at stake. Porsche have committed to an 80% electric lineup by 2030, which still leaves 20% running on existing combustion technology. With a rear engine sports car steeped in heritage and crucial to the brand's identity amongst that lineup, it's not hard to imagine where the point of inertia lies. But with the personal interest, there is definitely still a global demand in mind, albeit perhaps not within the automotive industry. Whilst the automotive industry will almost certainly see a drive towards electrification, there are many areas in which the weight, cost and other constraints of batteries prevent their implementation from being realistically feasible. In a decarbonised future, it is the maritime and aviation sectors that will likely be most reliant on some kind of sustainable fuel technology, and so the development by Porsche in this area is far from pointless. The only other realistic alternative here would be biofuels, but they face heavy criticism for their inefficient land and resource use. So is there any sense to Porsche's bold investment? The answer is yes, but perhaps not one that will be reflected in their own industry. Initially in this pilot phase, 130,000 litres of fuel production per year is planned primarily for use in Porsche's Mobile One Super Cup racing series. After this, they hope to scale to 55 million litres per year by 2025, and two years later to 10 times that amount. As to the ethics of the use of this energy resource, the answer is that it depends. With some of the most concentrated renewable energy resources found in remote regions where there is no infrastructure to transport the electricity away, in situ conversion to liquid fuels, despite not being the most efficient, can be a valuable solution. And to the classic car enthusiast wondering how much longer he'll be able to pour litres of petrol into his beloved steed, Porsche's endeavours will undoubtedly come as a reassurance even though the weekend coffee run might cost him just a little bit more than the coffee itself. I'm Luke, and this was The Upshift.